can we please talk about Tokyo Vice? This might be one of the best TV series in recent years. Maybe one of the best. More so because of its ability to open you up to a world that you weren't really aware of. Myself, personally, I'm not that familiar with Yakuza. I'm not really that familiar with Japanese traditions and cultures. I'm not really familiar with Tokyo and as a city, how people navigate around it and, you know, foreigners, all this malarkey. I'm not really familiar with that at all. The only thing I know about Japan in that kind of era of where Tokyo Vice is set in, which is kind of the 90s, um, 80s to go into the 90s, is basically the cars. That's the only thing I'm familiar with. It. The cars and obviously all the mobile phones. Because in that era, I was obsessed with Nokia. I was obsessed with the Dreamcast. I was obsessed with fucking Manga. I was obsessed with, um, what's that thing? I was obsessed with um, Streetwear, right? All that sort of stuff I was tripping obsessed with. But I wasn't really that knowledgeable about everything else I could. Especially the, the, the criminal underbelly of Tokyo. And again, Tokyo Vice isn't a documentary. I know it's a TV series. You don't believe anything you see. But if this is an insight into what's been happening in Tokyo, um, it's really interesting in terms of, um, you know, the role the Yakuza play in terms of the local politics, in terms of um, sex and terms of like, you know, um, clubs, bars, music, um, attitudes between men and women, like so many layered things going on there. But season two, episode four, or the season two, the first episode, the first four episodes of it, Prime TV. I'm going to give a bit of a spoiler here, just to kind of, in terms of the themes, what's going on. So if you don't want to hear what happened, please make sure you fast forward. But in this particular four episodes, one of the things that, that kind of stood out to me was a line that one of the actors said um, in the TV series where they were like, you don't get anything without giving up something. Nothing comes for free, basically. And then later on in the series, one of the main actors in it, this girl that owns like this amazing, um, you know, club where it's essentially like a, it's a lounge where, you know, men are treated really well and shit. I don't know how to describe it. It's almost like a brothel, but it's not really a brothel. I don't know what the name of those type of places are called in Japan, but they seem pretty cool, right? Where you were where kind of like, you know, Japanese businessmen go in um, they get to make, they get to make, they get to be made feel like a king by you know by these young pretty ladies they get to drink loads of lovely expensive drinks in this great setting great music great ambiance and shit it seems really cool and um she's running this little place and obviously the yakuza have a investment have a have a what you have a stake in her place so they take a particular percentage out of her whatever every month but the one thing that's troubling her the most is that one of the members of Yakuza is incredibly loose. He's a very, very loose canon, right? Uh, okay, people call me, it's calling the host, if it's hostess bar, right? Okay, big up Machi, hostess bar. So there's one member of the Yakuza who's incredibly reckless and he's scaring all the hosts, basically. And she's getting really worried because he might end up causing irreversible damage to the club giving her a bad reputation and scaring away all the punters especially some of the rich guys that she wants to obviously have, you know be regulars at her place so she decides to do a deal that would that would basically result in that person never returning back to the club again and it's it's basically going really well towards the end like she they figured it out this deal's gonna go well this this whatever we've got going on and then out of the blue at the last episode again the last episode of that four run episode four right at the end a complete tra travesty you know tragic event happened and essentially she still gets the to keep her club that guy obviously isn't going to be involved in work because he's no longer alive and other things have happened but it's come at a great cost like a great 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 cost and i swear to god that series and that episode in particular sat with me for probably a good couple of days after i watched it i was like you know what that is such a clear metaphor for life like you really don't get anything without having to give up something like something has to give it's and i was thinking about it a lot in terms of work and stuff i was thinking you know what like when it comes to the whole working stuff and hustling and trying to you know make something for yourself like just think about forget me but think about a person just trying to you know become a partner at a law firm and stuff most likely that woman or that guy isn't going to see their family they're not going to be able to see their partner 
They're probably not hanging around with their extended family too much. You're spending every single minute that you can thinking about the flipping, you know, your ability to become partner of this flipping firm. You're probably, every every time you have available during the day in the week, you're probably spending it at work. Maybe they're doing eight to eight plus whatever meetings you're doing after the fact. And then you finally become, you know, partner of this agency, but then at what cost? Your kids hate you. you maybe your partner resents you. Maybe you got divorced at this point. Maybe your friends have moved on because that's something I've I've learned over the years too. I was always like, I kind of, you know, I kind of romanticize the fact I don't have any friends as like some cool thing. But then when I was ready to have the friends, everybody had already moved on. No one's going to be standing still waiting for you to kind of, you know, be their friend again. They've all kind of got their own lives. They've all got new friends now. People that have sometimes even taken your spot, which is really hard to take. So those things kind of, you know, have always been in my head anyway so when i watched this episode i was like whoa bro this resonated with me super hard but i just think in terms of just the complex nature of like relationships there's a really cool scene with these um guys who are in a gay relationship and it kind of it handles that really really subtly well there's a cool situation going on between like you know um men and their image of masculinity and all this malarkey and career advancement and all this good stuff and even the mob as well like the yakuza and stuff and you know the the great consequences are going to come at the end of them when they're kind of going head to head with the police force and shit it's just a really good series it's just really well done and one thing i love about it too talking about cars if you're a fan of cars if you're a fan of you know cars from the 80s and 90s like i am maybe even going into the early 2000s i recommend you check out this series they have done it a real they have done it to the t in terms of making sure they have cars in there that are really um got that really kind of relate to the time period of which this series is set it's done so fucking well from the fashion to the fucking phones they're using all the time to the way information gets relayed the newspaper the actual physical hard copy of the newspaper playing such a vital role in tokyo's politics and conversation and shit it's fucking phenomenal i really recommend you check it out if you haven't already please do it's called tokyo vice i think it's available on like hbo or one of those places but again if you're a person like me and you're on the internet you'll find a way how to watch it yourself but i recommend you check it out tokyo vice absolutely incredible there's two seasons so far Uh, season two has already started four episodes in i can't wait for episode five episode four ended like magical magical ending so please check it out if you haven't already one of my favorite series so far one of my favorite series